Hello everybody, my name is Steve. Today I want to uh, tell you a little bit about Graphic Tracer, introduce you to the program and show you a little bit how to use it. Uh, to begin with, when you open up your screen, you're going to see this window here. If you notice across the top on the interface, there are several buttons. Uh, load image, separate colors, create vectors, text, adjust shapes, replace objects, edit objects, draw, and save. Uh, this is a uh, basically when you're working with this program you're just going to be working across this top menu. Uh, the first menu it says load image which uh, when you click on that it brings you to this uh, window this pull down right here where uh, we're starting with a new object we want to open uh, a bitmap you can open up a variety of bitmap files. Uh, once we choose a file to open and I'm going to choose this uh, file right here tiny league uh, I've, we have another video up here shows how quickly we can clean this up. But if you notice, this file here is a 22.9 kilobytes. It's a GIF image, something like you would pull off of the internet. We'll open that up and bring that into the window here. As you see, it's a very low resolution image. Uh, this steps us up over to the next window here, separate colors. Now, choosing the colors that you want to trace in Graphic Tracer is very easy. We can use, either use the automatic, let the program choose the colors, or we can use this little uh, eyedropper tool where you simply click on the colors you want to, to, to trace with that. If, you don't, if there's a color you don't want, just simply select it and hit the delete key on your keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, or click delete, I'm going to go ahead and click automatic. And here you see that the program selected the colors from this graphic. We have a white, a blue, a red, and a pink. Now that pink, if you zoom in here closely, you can see it picked up that pink as part of uh, the transition between the red and, and white. That's not a color that we want, so we're just going to select that color and hit the delete key on the keyboard and, and delete it. We have our colors separate, our colors selected here, so that we move over to the next uh, button here, which is create vectors. When I click on this button, it's going to uh, trace that image using uh, an advanced sense edge auto tracing technology. You can see uh, this is the initial trace. We are now a vector graphic. Up here, if I choose my view, we can view that in our original bitmap, which allows us to see the original bitmap in the background. We can turn that on and off and view fill. And that allows us to, to see what it looks like in the, in the fill. Now, if this was uh, going to be used for something very tiny you know we may be able to just use it as it is but we want to perfect this graphic so we're going to go ahead and move to the next step here where we're going to clean up text now whenever you're working with a graphic you always have the option of cleaning up the text if I wanted to to move the the control points or nodes and clean it up manually I could do that but we're graphic tracer is a very powerful program it has an integrated font identification and replacement capabilities so we're going to take and we're going to select these letters. I'm going to select that T, hold my shift key down as I click the I, N, and the Y. And we're going to go to our text tool. And here we have an opportunity to try and identify that font and replace it. It also has options for finding a font by name where you can type a name of a font in or type a font in and it will bring it up and show you what it looks like or adding additional text. But we're going to use this top button here, identify font and replace. Now when I click on that, you can see it. Uh, the letters that I selected are, are uh, outlined here. We see a, a, a red line here, and that shows uh, the, the baseline of the text, which is straight line text, which this is not straight line text, so we're going to use this little pull down right here, and we're going to choose angled text. We also have the option of vertical, free characters, circular, and circular arc and curve. When I click angled text, Graphic Tracer goes through and it recalculates that baseline and that's very important for our font identification. We have our baseline selected. We're still in our font window here, or our text window, and uh, we have a, a little button here that says next. So I merely come over here and I click the word next. And we have a, some optical character recognition which goes through and, and seeks to identify those letters. And we have a T I N Y. So we're pretty certain that selected the right letters here, but this one particular letter here may be a, a lowercase l or a, or a capital I. Graphic Tracer doesn't know that for certain, so I'm going to tell it that by simply highlighting the I and typing in a capital I in that place. 
Okay, once we have uh, taken and made sure that these letters are associated with the parts of our graphic, we're ready to do our font search. And I come over here to next. And graph, when I click this, Graphic Tracer goes through and can search through a, a online font database of over 100,000 fonts. You can also build databases of any of your own font collections that will search. And it's going through and searching. And, and here it superimposes uh, what it believes the font to be right on top of my trace. And you can see that's a, a pretty good match. Over here we have a prioritized list of fonts you know, from the various databases that it searches. And you can see that the first one is Balloon Extra Bold BT Italic. And it uh, identified it from uh, the FlexiSign font library. Now, uh, it also came up with a, a list of other fonts from other libraries. And we have down here a, a button that says Replace, Grayed Out, and Suppliers. Now, this is if, if this was a font that I owned, this Replace button would highlight and it would allow me to replace. Uh, if it's a font that you don't own though it says suppliers and, and so I could go through and click on that and it would go to the internet looking for this particular font from a variety you can select from a variety of databases and some of them are, are sites where you purchase the font there are some sites on there also where you can download the font for free and there's something like 20,000 fonts that Graphic Tracer can currently direct you to where you can download for free but uh, I don't own this first font uh, and as I scroll down here, I don't own the second font. It's now, if, as I'm scrolling down here, you're not noticing it, but this is changing slightly with each font that I choose. As I scroll down, I'm looking for a font that maybe I own. Here we have Balloon Extra Bold, Corel Draw 9, and there's a little star beside that particular font database, and it's highlighted in green. I don't know if you can see that very well on the screen, but but this indicates that this comes from a library that I own. When I select that, you can see that we still have a nice match and the replace button highlights. That means I can, I can replace that font. And when I click replace, Graphic Tracer is going to take that font and it's going to, going to make a, a, an outline of that and replace it right into my graphic automatically. And I'm gonna show you when I click replace. When I zoom in here, you can see that that font has now been replaced, that, that trace has been replaced with a perfect image created from the original font. If I click undo, you can see the old font, what it looked like, or the old trace, I should say, what it looks like. I click redo, and that's what we now have. So it's very fast. It sized it and spaced it and put it right back in that logo, all automatically, right where it belongs. It saves the time of having to identify the font manually scrolling down through, uh, hitting the down arrow on your keyboard, or cutting and pasting and uploading to a font search site, or, or you know, even identifying the font. If it's a font you do know, you, I didn't have to install this on my computer, type it in, resize it, and uh, rotate it, and put it back in, and, and put it in the correct color. It did all of that automatically. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do that same thing with this uh, the, with this second typeface. I'm going to choose the L, hold my keyboard uh, shift key down, and click on uh, the letter E. And notice when I click on the letter E, it selected the whole rest of the word. This is because this is connected script. Now that's not a problem with Graphic Tracer because uh, it can identify connected script as well. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come over here to identify font and replace, and click on that. And here's our baseline. We need to choose angled text again. And it recalculates that baseline. And we'll click next. Now the optical character recognition on uh, connected script is, uh, or script font, is a, it has a little trouble with that. You can see it's, they thought that was maybe a lowercase l. I need to highlight that and I'm going to type in an uppercase l in that box, letting uh, Graphic Tracer know that that's an uppercase l. And here we have a question mark because we have all of these letters here that are connected together. It's not sure what that is. So I'm simply going to highlight that question mark and I'm going to type in E-A-G-U-E. -E. Telling Graphic Tracers that uh, all of these letters are in this box and they're connected together. So when it goes out and does its search, it's going to look for an L that looks like this and an E-A-G-U-E -E that looks like this. So I come over the, and click Next and Graphic Tracer is going to do its search and uh, as it goes through and here's uh, here's the text that it found now on first glance this looks like a pretty good match but when you zoom in you can see 
that on the A and the G and the U, you know, we're rounded up here and not uh, not angled. So we're going to go through and we're going to look at the next font in, in the list here. And you can see that's a much nicer match. But again, it's not a font that I own. So I'm going to scroll down here to a font that I own here. Here we have from the Master Font Collection. There's a star beside it. I click on that and we still have a, a nice match. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replace my text with that. And you can see we have just replaced uh, the, the font with the um, created from the Master Font uh, identified font. You can see here the overlaps uh, right here where the letters uh, were replaced those letters. Now if you were going to be cutting this in vinyl or, or doing a heat transfer or something like that, you, you really don't want those little overlaps in there. We want it to connect it all together, weld it all together. So I'm simply going to select that lower text there. Come, o come over here to my Edit Objects button. And in this uh, menu here we have a shaping tool. And that shaping tool uh, in that we have the opportunity for welding, punching, intersecting, and uh, I'm simply going to select weld and I click apply and it automatically welds that all together making all those uh, letters cut ready. Okay, we've cleaned up, we've identified both those fonts and cleaned them up. We're now going to work on our contour. You can see the contours here are not parallel uh, and this can take a lot of time if you have to clean this up manually. Uh, or even going through and deleting them and, and recreating them in other programs. Graphic Tracer has a contour rep, uh, creation replacement tool. I'm simply going to select this text here, hold my shift key down and select the font on the lower font. So we've got both the, the fonts that we've replaced. And, and we're going to come up here to our replace, replace object button where we have a replace contour option. Now with this option here, Graphic Tracer is going to be able to go through and recalculate those contours and replace them. It comes up uh, showing it's an outside contour, pointed corners, and the, the default here is a 0 .04 distance from the original. Uh, and I, we're going to do a preview and see just what that looks like. Okay, here you can see the red outline is the recalculated contour, the black outline is that first contour, and you can see we need to increase that distance a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and increase that to 0 0.05, and we'll do another preview. And you can see that's much nicer, much closer to the original contour. Now, we have an option here of adding a contour or removing the old contour and replacing it with the new one. So what this is going to do when I click Apply, that red outline is the new contour and it's going to take out the, the old one and automatically replace it with the new one. So I'm going to click apply and you'll see. And there we have just replaced that contour uh, in that image with a, with a new contour. Now we want this next contour to be the same distance away from uh, the first contour as the first contour is from the letter. So we're going to add a 0.05 to that 0 0.05 and make it a 0.10 and we'll preview that and you can see the preview here how it's recalculated that contour from this contour and when I click it's going to replace the old contour uh, with the new one just like so and we'll do that one more time adding a 0 0.05 to the point, uh, 0 0.10 making a 0.15 and we'll preview that and apply okay it was that easy we just replaced the text uh, identified and replaced the text. We've replaced all three contours and the next thing we're going to do, all we have left is these stars in this image. So we're going to take this first star and we're going to go to our adjust shape. Again, moving across this menu here, the adjust shape. And you can see when I select that, you can see the outlines, the trace outlines of that star. Now notice these lines are green and these lines are red. Green lines designate straight lines, red lines designate curves. Now you can toggle those back and forth merely by double clicking on a line. If I double click on a, on a green line, it's going to turn it into a curve. If I double click on a red line, it automatically turns it into a straight line. So I'm going to double click on these lines here and make them into straight lines. We have a little corner here we need to work on. So I'm just going to select that corner and we're just going to convert that to a corner. Now notice when I hover over that convert to corner, you can see the point on that star um, how is what a preview of what's going to happen? So I click on that, and it automatically 
uh, creates that into a corner. We have this half of the star now all cleaned up. It looks real good. We're going to use this half of the star to clean up this half of the star. And so we're going to use a mirror tool so that it makes both half of the stars identical. I simply select half of the star. I come over here to our mirror horizontal. And when I hover over that, you can see a preview. And I double click on that. And you can see we've just cleaned up that star. OK. We've got one star cleaned up. We could take this star and use it to clean up this star and, and uh, just by copying, pasting, and resizing, which you do in a lot of programs. But I'm going to select that star. And we've got a Replace Object option here where we have a Copy Shape to an Object tool. Now, when I click on that Copy Shape to an Object tool, what I've done is I've copied this shape right here. And it gives me an arrow. And anything I hover over, uh, I can turn that into the same shape as you can see right there. That's not the right kind of star, so we're going to undo that. I'm going to come over here to this star here, and if I click on that, it would make it identical to that first star. But I want to resize that, so if I just hold the shift key down on my keyboard, it automatically resizes, and I click, and we've cleaned up that star. The last thing we need to do is come in here and clean up this, uh, this last star. I'm going to just double click on these lines, and we'll make those into straight lines. We're going to take that and turn that into a corner and there are keyboard shortcuts for this as well. I'm going to select, I could either marquee around that and select those nodes or I can select this node here, hold the control key down on my keyboard and select this node here and it selects all the nodes in between. So what we in effect have done is selected this angle and now we're going to use this mirror symmetrical tool over here to reproduce that angle on the other three angles and we'll quickly clean that up just like that. And you can see we have now cleaned up this particular image. Everything is perfect. It's ready for uh, saving or export. If I come over here to the Save button, I have an option to export this uh, into uh, several different file formats. You can see we've got Adobe Illustrator, uh, EPS, DXF, AutoCAD, PLT, uh, back as a BMP for those people who do embroidery and an SVG output. So uh, I can select any of those and save it in any of those file formats. If you are a CorelDRAW user or an Adobe Illustrator user, we have a click link function here where you can select your version of CorelDRAW or Illustrator and you merely click transfer and it will take this image and pop it right into your CorelDRAW or your Illustrator window uh, ready to continue on with your production. This is a very powerful program. It's able to uh, really increase your production workflow and eliminate uh, lots of time out of your cleanup process. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. We will have many more demonstrations to go to show you of some of the many other powerful features of Graphic Tracer. Thank you for your time.